When we start up this week's adventure of Dungeons and Dragons, we find our players right inside of this big, mighty area where the waterfalls are pouring down over top of the map. Uh, you can feel or hear the water just splashing up these tidal waves moving around the edges of where the, uh, the water is at, going down and draining out into separate caverns. At the very heart of the battlefield is this large machine with these strange uh, armatures and pylons aimed as though ready to fire at some great mechanical object. At the center of the place, a huge wall of corpses spews out from where the strange pink fleshy gunk is located, almost like gum-like texture, uh, consistency, flavor, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and coloration. Um, down here, you have this salty spray as though you're underneath the ocean that you can smell through your nostrils, um, mixing with that strange, almost syrupy or sugar-like scent uh, of those uh, of the flesh. You're in the middle of fighting the drow, and you had just watched as Xanthar had fallen deep down into the goop. But when we start today, this session, you will watch as a wholly different being places a hand onto the edge uh, of the, the lip, places a second one. Now, this armor begins to shine, gleam, and glisten as he pulls himself out. Big, mighty wings flash up uh, with the gunk spraying outwards. A mighty uh, golden halo rising off of the pearly white uh, gleaming armor uh, of this clad individual with their hair flowing in the backdrop as though in some movie set. He rises with a smolder in his eyes as he says, Where am I? How did I get here? And you look around you, Xanthar, as you ask where you are, what is going on, and the scene before you is outstretched with Pox and Solana in the backdrop uh, behind you, uh, a wall of corpses split off between the drow who are, you can hear them sort of clanging their weapons against the wall, and before you is a, a paladin, Groga, who um, is in a battle stance ready to fight around all the rushing water. What do you want to do? It's your turn in combat. Does that look like Xanthar in a way? Xanthar, you can describe since Groga asked, what do you look like now? Um, I don't look anything like my former self, which I don't remember anything about what happened, but um, I'm a scour scourged Asimar that was essentially just came out of this pit and threw out my okay. wings. Is your hair on the miniature accurate? Because it is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Yeah, I it am intimidated by that hair. I'm going to roll to shove him back into the pit. <laughs> Someone else is going to be prettier than you and you can't handle it. I wear a mask because I'm too ugly. Damn it, look at how perfect he is. I just have to squish it. <laughs> you so he's do canonically gorgeous, it. right? Okay. Oh yeah, he's canonically gorgeous. I mean, all the women swoon when they see him. Even the men are like, gosh, I wish I could put that in my pocket. Hashtag. Canonically gorgeous. Canonically gorgeous. <laughs> Xanthar, it is your turn in combat. What would you like to do? Alright, so let's see where I am here. Um I don't want to walk back into that pit again, but um That's a good idea. That's an excellent first idea. Don't do that. So there's two drow here. Okay. Um and Rogue is up about thirty feet away. Uh, that, yeah, it's, it's probably, I think, like, 25, 20. Uh, um, yeah, it's, like, 20, 20 feet. Let me get it on my character sheet here. I know, you're throwing you in right on the deep end. First one to go. We start with combat. Might have to refresh this. Oh, there we are. I might throw a bless on a couple of people here. Hopefully you pick the right side. <laughs> What's up? Hopefully you pick the right side. Start blessing the drow. Like... I mean, oh, I think that would be delightful. 
Oh my god. I'm all Shove here. For it. <laughs> I'm keeping my role for shoving him in the pit. Uh, <laughs> three creatures ways. So, and you can bless yourself, correct? Yes. Okay, so. So you could choose, like, Roga. for example, Solana, Groga, and Pox and be super selfless, or you could choose Xanthar, Xanthar, and Xanthar, or you, or you could choose. No, I'm, I'm going to do the three minus myself. Okay. Oh, selfless. <laughs> Wow. Very well. So it's the, one, the, one D4. That's right. You rise out of the pit. Uh, you raising your weapons, this pearlescent gleaming armor shining uh, off as your wings spread wide. You say a word of blessings uh, and each of your allies around you suddenly feel uh, this power well up inside of them. Uh, as your gorgeous words, you open your mouth and it's like the sweetest sound they've ever heard. Uh, just touches the tickles their and ears. For my bonus action, I'll cast Spiritual Weapon. Uh, where would you like to cast your Spiritual Weapon, sir? I'm going to put it uh, right between these two drow uh, behind them. Uh, uh, unfortunately, your your vision of them is obscured currently by a wall of corpses. Um, but that doesn't stop oh. you from being able to like put the weapon down and like, move it over to attack uh, at them. So you could, like put it there and then float it around. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. So, yeah, the one that's uh, closest to Groga, I want to swing sure. it down. Absolutely can do that. Go for it. Make the attack roll. Oops. My bad. One. That was damage. It was damn good damage, though. So, 14. A 14, unfortunately, does not breach the armor class of these drow. Uh, the weapon swings around to the side and has this huge uh, blunt uh, object of faith tries to slam into the, the front of his face, he just sort of nimbly ducks away uh, and the hammer misses its swing. Okay, end my turn. All right, Groga, we go to you. So I've got this a giant flash wall. Of light, some tickling words, and yes, there is a wall of corpses in front of you. Okay. And thus, and yeah, get... the, the line of pink gunk <laughs> is the wall of corpses. And I, I do steaming. feel that I feel that blessed though, right? Is that's what you were describing, sir? Absolutely. You certainly do. You don't see the four-armed drow though anymore? Spider-like? Well, I'm quite hurt, so I think I will just lay on hands myself here. When I think about drow, I touch myself. Oh, yeah. I don't want anybody else. That's what you do. Sure. <laughs> all right you touch yourself with your hands you pump this healing restorative magic through your body uh you restore as much as many as many hit points as you wish to expend what else would you like to do sorry one second and then uh let's see i mean that's my action i don't really have much for a bonus action good old paladins <sighs> yeah uh, but... <laughs> I think I will back up here a little bit. Oh, why is Tail Spark? Careful! Here? Stop, my Tail Spark. Ah, uh, Demon Gun got you using the hops. <laughs> oh God, that's God. He's green with that, man. Hold on, now, now I need to measure. What is well, this? let me, uh, let me. I am never using those hops again. Hold on. <laughs> you, <laughs> I mean, if you want to use the hops, you can use the hop. I'm just gonna measure you. That's all. No, I'm I'm not using hops. I don't like hops. Um, there's Apparently nothing you do. <laughs> there's nothing um, that I will be stepping in, similar to what my our my friend here just stepped in. That's right? correct. Okay. Yes, you're walking on very solid wood, uh, and as you go across the beams, you can hear the pitter patter. It's thick. It's sturdy. You can sense with that strange sixth sense that humans have that whatever it is you're standing on is not at all fragile you ever realize as a human being that you can somehow tell how thick or sturdy something is by touching it just feeling like the atoms inside that's a wild thing that humans can do that like it lets you know you're safe man this thing ain't gonna collapse underneath you there's no slime no gunk there's no I'll, traps i'll move over this way but i'll keep my eye on this new uh, feathered friend that we have. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, 
Very well. You are drawn to them uh, as we go to the uh, gladiators, the drow. Uh, the first one turns around and seeing no other target uh, than like the big wall of corpses blocking him, seeing no other target than the dwarf over there, he is going to like bring out those blades and then just like <clears throat> sort of like, you know, heaving, huffing breath breath as he walks on over and you can hear the sounds of uh, as his blood gets spilled across the, the bridge and the drow just like goes cleaving and stabbing into him. Uh, you can hear sort of a sound from the dwarf saying, I don't, I, oh no, not me, no, 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 them, not me. What happens to the drow is un, or to the dwarf as he backs away is unknown, but he uh, definitely doesn't look like he's doing too good. Meanwhile, the other drow continues to advance. Uh, he is going to run up to the edge of this pillar where he can see Solana uh, as well. At, well, almost, Pox, almost. Uh, and as he goes around the edge, he like goes over to the side, takes out a, a blade, sort of licks the edges of the thing, and is going to chuck it at Solana. Cool. I got cool. All right, so uh, Solana, your first attack as he throws one blade is 13 to hit. Thou miss. I know, isn't that wonderful? The That's next so one nice. is the next one. Hmm. Okay. Um, um, okay, okay. I, okay, I will. Yeah, yeah, it hits. I, I was debating doing shield I'm... in order to build up the wart, but I already have the wart, so we'll just use it. So, we're good. Okay. Uh, as the, de the, <laughs> the thing flies through the air, uh, you see the blade as it's moving towards you. He sort of makes this sort of this, this chanting noise in uh, in the drow language or in, in, in Infernal. It's just something like, uh, he just spits out these words, and you see these like little evil script going along the edge of the blade. As it stabs into your body, you can feel a stinging poisonous sensation move throughout. Um, you take 22 poison damage. Okay, so my arcane oh. ward um, is a no-go after that. And it's Only two out. piercing. Only two piercing. So the 21 was with the two. Okay, yes, yes, exactly. We have two left, yeah. And then uh, I need to make me a constitution saving throw as the drow poisons, burdened by this infernal uh, curse, seems to try flooding into your blood. Okay. You can feel the, uh, the horridness of it. There's already a tenant living here. Get out. Natural 18 plus one, so 19. Hey, nice. Uh, as the dagger flashes into your body, you can feel the infernal fires uh, beginning to melt through your blood like uh, some strange otherworldly poison or acid. Uh, you realize that this is like a, a, ten, like a, a very tense, necrotic burst uh, that's like tightening your muscles in your body, but you've felt this before back in the Sile realm. You've you've sensed this dread sense of undeath in your body before, uh, and that gives you some resolve to steel yourself against whatever's coming. Uh, you sort of brace yourself, pluck out the dagger, and like throw it to the ground before too much of the curse can uh, leech into your body. But the, the drow before you seems very satisfied and it's tossed. He only has two instead of four weapons left, uh, but he does sort of like whirl them around like a drummer does some drumsticks. He throws one into the air, catches it behind his back, and then goes, Nargh! gives you like a, you know, Gene Simmons tongue stick out sort of a thing. Pox, we go to you. Show up. Also, I'd like to say I cannot see initiative order, but. What? How about now? I can. There wow. we go. We love Tailspire. It is the greatest tool, the, the single greatest VTT that is out there on the market. Flawless, totally uh, supreme in everything it does. And if you haven't used it yet, you need to. <laughs> All right. <Nice. laughs> I. That's not plug. I'm here to sell copies of Tailspire. I'm not here to run D&D. <laughs> That's great. 
We have the... some stock we need I'll to know about. Right <laughs> if they would let me participate in the company, I would have, but no, they won't let me. So. Uh, Perhaps I'm too crazy we'll for them. Bigger. I am going to run up, grab the guy with some apple jacks and inflict Dude, wounds. Oh, inflict wounds. Roll the hit. How's a 21? A 21 breaches. <clears throat> you uh, place your hand out, say the code word Applejacks, uh, and as you, ho oh, oh, that's, <laughs> that's that's a lot of damage. damage. <laughs> good damage. <laughs> <laughs> the DM that's a lot of suddenly damage. stops. <laughs> As you deal 32 necrotic damage, uh, the uh, energy, just sort of this green lightning flashing through his body, rippling through his skin. You watch as the two hands that had already thrown the daggers sort of wither into these husk-like things, vestigial as they flap harmlessly around his body. And he looks down with pain in his eyes. You can see like a little tears at the corner, but he's a, he's a manly man. He's, he's gonna fight back against the tears. He struggles not to let you notice. What else would you like to do? You've clearly hurt him. He's clearly in pain. Half his body isn't working. Ooh. I would also like to ask, did one of these guys have Hex? Um, you know, I'm going to be completely honest with you. It's been a while since we've had this game, and I don't really know, but it does seem to me like something you would lead combat with, right? Yeah. So, oh, uh, no, I'm... no, hold on. I don't have Hex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you're playing Plague Doctor. What are you doing? <sighs> what am I doing? Yeah, I, I just got really excited about a bonus action. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, that'll be it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna okay, well, the, the drow assassin. Sorry, go ahead, Solana. I was just gonna ask, did the um, necrotic damage that looked like it fully took, not like any sort of like resistance to as far as we could see? That's right. It doesn't seem as though we have any resistances to it at the present moment. The... The leader, the matron, the drow assassin, you have no idea what's going on with her. Last time we saw her, she had plunged down into the depths of whatever this strange uh, amalgamation of water and frost, froth and uh, slimy gunk had been. She doesn't resurface. Good job, Groga. <laughs> Pick her up and throw her off into the, 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 the uh, dangerous water. Solana, we do go back to you. Your move. Okay. So, um, seeing as this guy seemed to really enjoy the necrotic damage he just took, he didn't and at all. Um, but he, but he could enjoy it more. You know, we don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, move just slightly, make sure I got plenty of range and can see uh -huh, him clearly. Uh -huh. We're just gonna do a blight. You know. Let's oh. see what happens. Yeah, just um, that. Mm -hmm. Just just that. So a constitution save would be lovely. Oh yeah, Maybe sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blight. Just a well known, well known first level spell. Uh yes. with no Cantrip, really. very little damage. None. Uh, None. <laughs> yeah. So his constitution save here was a fourteen. He's got a fourteen for Blight. Needed a sixteen, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm very saddened to hear this. Clearly just heartbroken. Um, oh, I really, I just needed to show up this 32 damage and just see what 88 does. <laughs> um, so satisfying doing the click of the electronic oh, dice. Ooh, just, just Ooh. only slightly more. 34. 34. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, the necrotic twins are at it here today. Uh, you go over around the corner, seeing this person there angry with how he had stabbed you. Uh, you reach forth with your hand and actually do you want to script how he dies he's about to die you want to script the death oh i would love to i would love for there to be like some remnants of the necrosis from hoxes and i just want to reach out and just say you know we this is really nothing personal but you just kind of were showboying a little too much with the knives and i just it's just not my taste so we're just gonna take care of this i'm just gonna point and let like the beam of dark necrosis kind of condense from my darkened hands and shoot out towards him and then just expand the necrosis that already started. 
So his oh. like dark purple skin just goes totally black. Lovely. His skin does completely blacken and wither like an apple you've left on your counter for three weeks law uh, overdue. Uh, and he just suddenly shrivels up into a little ball of death onto the ground uh, and dies. I'm just picturing... Without a single word. Uh... <laughs> the sword guy from like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 100%. <laughs> what else All do you want right. to do, Solana? Um, I want to step about here and kind of shout out to the other guy. Hey, hey, hoy, hoy, hey, I just killed your buddy. Come here. Come here. Come <laughs> this, this, this way. This way, target right here. Right? Nice, big. Revenge is a great plot. Um, yeah, that'll be it. <laughs> <laughs> the the across the way as you scream or you scream and shout at him he turns around blade mi- or, uh, mid thrust into the uh, the the dwarf is sort of red and sickly with his blood as it drips down onto the uh, the bridge and he sort of like grunts uh, this one clearly less showy than the other one uh, and brutishly he sort of like wipes the blade off on his uh, his thigh and pre- prepares to charge. We're gonna thumb claw big axe, uh, no longer big axe, just thumb claw. Uh, and thumb claw is going to move over here to where Groga's at. Uh, and then Groga, he's gonna do something new. Uh, he's gonna come over to where you are currently located. Uh, and how much health are you currently missing? Well, with the lay on hands, I think I'm only 10 down. Yeah, you should be, you should be down, not oh, much. 11 down, sorry. <clears throat> he analyzes your wounds, seeing all the, the puncture marks around your armor, around the edges, sort of the damage you've sustained. And he, his chest opens up. <laughs> uh, he reaches inside. Some of the gears, like one pops out, flies onto the ground adjacent to you. And he pulls out like half of a bottle of shattered health potion. Uh, and he goes to hand it to you and says, drink up. You are wounded. Do you wish to take it? I mean, does it look like a health potion? <laughs> it does, it does. It looks like it's only half that's left as it's it's been smashed, crashed, pieces of it broken, but some of the liquid is still in there, like in the, oh. the round part of the bottle that... It just has some glass in it, it'll be fine. Yeah, just some <laughs> backwash, it's okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'll thank him and like kind of point like go help them and then I'm not going to I'll be like I'll just <laughs> toss it back behind me. Yeah, all right. Uh he'll use the other five feet of his movement to go closer towards them. Uh Beryl is really smart. Beryl is perhaps the smartest of everyone in your group because Beryl does nothing. He pretends that he's a barrel and does not get involved with the fight. Uh, going back over towards the, uh, what, what, why is your name Drow? Your name should be Dwarf. I really thought we this were about guy. to get a big <laughs> twist. <laughs> no, uh, we go to the, the Dwarf who is just sort of, you can hear him on the side going, you know, bloody in his throat and all that. Xanthar, go back to you. Um, so I'll, I'll move my uh, spiritual weapon towards uh, the drown attack. Sure, by all means, you um, actually can you, you propel before it forward. I do that, before I do that, I'm going to guide and hold um, the drown. Sure. <clears throat> Go right ahead. Fire it off. Give me that attack roll. Ten. Unfortunately, a 10 does not breach. Uh, You raise up your hand to smite him with guiding energy. And as your radiance leaves your hand, a little bit of gunk was still on you from when you had just emerged. And instead, you just just, uh, this big, sort of a screeching noise as you blast the last bit of gunk on your hand. You sort of look down, hold your weapon midair and swing the the spiritual weapon from afar. Did, Did he just miss the guiding bolt? I, th- I think that's Xanthar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna use my sword. 
<laughs> Please. I do. wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Sixteen. <clears throat> a sixteen, unfortunately, does not breach either. Uh, as you go to slam the spiritual weapon into the guy, he lifts up his uh, his daggers, parries with it, and there's nothing for him to stab. But he does parry. Yeah, well, that sucks. I'm done. <laughs> would you Would you like to stay standing on the ledge of the pit? Um. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll move a little bit. I'll end my turn. Okay. You end your turn there and we go to Groga. Groga, you've just now tossed uh, the broken half of the health potion uh, away into the water. <clears throat> Thumbclaw Big Axe has gone past you over towards where uh, Xanthar is currently at. This new majestic celestial being. And this wall is still blocking me here, so I'm going to use my action sprint. to sprint. Yep, sprint around that, giving it a wide berth, and then getting up in position here in front of my comrades. Pox, Hi. Solana, you oh. hear the thumping and cl clanking of armor on steel upon steel as Groga sprints by you. I think I know that sound from a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> Take that as a no. Nothing else you want to oh. do? Oh, no. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Nope. No, that's uh, bonus actions are limited. All right, we go back to the uh, the Drow Gladiator then, uh, and he rushes forward about uh, 20 feet, and then he is going to make an acrobatics check to swing along the edge of the bridge and launch himself uh, past the wall towards Xanthar, uh, yeah. uh, which he does succeed on. Yeah. Uh, and then as he leaps down in front of Xanthar's face, wielding the daggers wide, uh, or the, the short swords, he's just gonna do this whirlwind attack as all four of them start to squish, 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 try and slash into your body. This is all 10 feet of the right. wall? That's right, that's right. He, so what he's doing is he is, if you can see on my tail spire, he's going Oh, I understand here. what you're saying. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I thought he's it gonna, was like gonna... a whoo, not a whoo. Nah, no. That's real nah, nice. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, Style yeah, points. yeah. He's gonna, yeah. You yeah, said this style. one wasn't flashy. He's not. He's not. <laughs> All he's, This is just a simple for him. This is a simple act of athletics. This is athleticism <laughs> at its best. You know, you could put him in the Sc the Scottish Highland games, throw in a tree. I mean, it's just impressive. That's all. It's not flashy. It's just impressive. Anyway, Xanthar, 22 to hit. Yeah, it's going to hit. You take seven slashing damage uh, as the second time he swings around with the next blade. Uh, and this that one goes wide. <laughs> arcs into the back uh, behind where you are uh, and just sort of clatters, clatters down into the goop. The second or the third swing, he's got a 15 to breach. It's a mess. And then for the fourth one, he's got an 18 to breach. That's a hit. You take another seven slashing damage as his whirlwind of blades catches you two at a time, two out of the four, uh, and you you can feel like the rage, the anger in his body. Uh, he's then going to take out a little box item, and you see it's got this. It's like this glass cube, uh, sort of this geometrical, uh, almost maybe look like looks like a Rubik's cube, but instead of all these flashy lights along the edge of the Rubik's cube, instead it's darkness black, unending, the void. Uh, and then he just crushes it. Uh, and you see this huge pool of darkness spew uh, out forth from inside. Pox, we go to That's you. Bad. It is Ooh. bad. Mm. What do you want to do? A magical uh, veil, of a shroud of darkness has appeared on the field. 
This? Now, if you want, I know it could be really hard for you to walk around there. You could walk through the goop. Well, he came back with wings. I'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> True. How bad could it be? I don't know. I, I, I can't, I'm not convinced it's Xanthar yet. It's... Mm. The hair. I just, I never pictured Xanthar with hair. I can't. No. <laughs> you you mean you never pictured a robot with hair? What? No, I know. Shocking, really. Listen, I... that sounds like you're just prejudiced against the robots that we saw um, in Guardians of the Galaxy, who naturally had half of their hair with their heads with hair. Lovely Girl, purple color, right? Was it white? It's a microaggression of mine. I'm aware. Yeah, it's a, it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I've been oh, so many AI of those modules this you. week. I, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I thought you were watching South Park. It's micro microaggression, bro. Hmm. I mean, I did binge all of South Park. I've seen every episode now, but... DC Prince. I exactly. would like to argue that oh, I can boy. run straight. Because I can see where the bridge comes out on the other side. I mean, yeah, you could, there's, yeah, you could run straight through the darkness. That's fine. Oh, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, no, I'm... I mean, it's, you know, you could be like a child going, ah, and like running <laughs> through, but it doesn't change what was there before. You know, okay, darkness cool, cool, doesn't cool, cool. change. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Just wanted to You're make cool. sure, just, yes, yeah. Then I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna really the fish. <laughs> Yeah, you got memory, you got yeah. it. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. Easiest argument I've ever had. I don't accept this answer. Listen, that's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you sprint forward uh, onto the edge of the bridge. Oh. You do not. Yes, sorry. Now that you said sprint, yeah, no, I can definitely sprint. Yeah, I'm... you can dash. I'm gonna dash, duh. Can you heal the nice. word the dwarf at all? You About dash that. across. I don't Go have ahead. healing word. Gotcha. gotcha. Good to know. Good to know. As you dash across the into the darkness, you feel a rush from this veil, almost as though spirits are crying out for you. Uh, you can hear this strange noise echoing uh, inside of the darkness. It's clearly not the normal darkness spell um, as you go into it and out of it. You almost feel as though something is trying to reach inside of you. Um, but nevertheless, you make your way out onto the other side. And as you go to cross this bridge, you can feel it crumbling underneath you. Remember that, that sense that I, I talked about earlier, that sixth sense that humans have? This sixth sense gives you a bad impression about this bridge. Uh, you feel as though if there's too much weight on here at once, the whole thing might collapse. Uh, and you can just feel the wood of the thing just sort of uh, underneath. Give you the impression that the pewter that's underneath your feet over top of the wood is likely not helping the scenario. Uh, even that pewter might be a little bit too much weight. And as you go towards the very end of the bridge, you can see pools of blood slick around the dwarf's body uh, as he sits there weakly with one hand still slightly moving, trying to grasp onto the meat cleaver that was his weapon. Uh, and that's that's you. Uh, you notice, uh, a, a, you also notice, well, maybe you don't. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Well, I guess nothing else is noticed. But anyway, the Drow Assassin does Drow Assassin things. Um, and Solana, we go to you. Your friend rushes forth into the darkness, crosses the bridge of death. Does not um. say their name. So I don't super like this darkness. It sounds like it's it's making things just a little more difficult than we need it to be. And I don't know what's going on with this angel dude yet, but like he did bless me. So I guess I'll do this. Um, I'm going to cast Dispel Magic focusing on the darkness. Well, isn't that rude? Uh, <laughs> what level would you like to cast Dispel Magic at? Uh, third level. Okay, one sec. you reach out with dispel magic uh, and you feel the fabric of reality sort of beginning to mold to your desires, uh, the, the fabric of magic that interlaces, interweaves through all of the matter of the universe. Uh, you can feel the darkness itself reaching out angrily as you begin to dispel it. You feel like a fizzling <laughs> sort of a noise as it winks in and out 
of existence. And as it w begins winking on you, you see an impression of the of the drow matron, like spirit walking through the darkness. Like you see her blinking up to the edge, then blinking through the wall. Uh, finally, as you dispel it, you see her stay. Oh, that's the wrong thing. You see her standing over top of the gunk. She's just kneeling down over the thing, placing her fingers nearly upon the stuff. Uh, and she looks up at you. You can see this, like her eyes, which should be bloodshot red. Um, well, I guess, I guess there's a wall blocking so you can't see her anymore. Yeah, she's just gone. Uh, but for for the other people, uh, for Xanth, oh no, no one can see her. No one knows she's here. So you just lastly watch your spirit walk through the wall. How about that? Anyway, until your turn. Great. Um, so I mean, I don't see her. Through the dark. Yeah. Um, I'll just move up to about here, I think, because she feels a little bit protected with like this wall here, the other gunk, and just knowing the draws on the other side. So she's gonna hang out there. Um, that'll end my turn. Right. You got a Thumbclaw Big Axe, um, who is going to rush forward towards the uh, the next, the last Drow Gladiator. Uh, and he takes a big, mighty fist and just sort of Boosh! Slams it into the face of the drow, uh, which like his mask cracks and falls off the one side. You can see ashened, blackened skin underneath, uh, pre, pre-blighted skin, uh, mind you. And he takes his other fist and just sort of does this and then slams it into the side of his uh, his chest or his um, his waist. Gets, gets in there and try and liver punch him. Uh, and as that rocket fist comes around, the drow sort of goes sways to the side slightly, but continues his fighting stance. Barrel, on the other hand, is gonna keep playing Barrel. Dwarf is going to call out uh, towards Pox and says, hey, can you please help me? I'm dying here. God. If he can talk, he's conscious, though. He is conscious. Xantha, we go to you. Um, God. all right, so who's close to me here? I can't see the matron. Uh, she is behind a pillar behind your back. So I have no idea. Yeah. Um, nobody knows other than for my me, though? Yes, he's right in front of your face. All right. Um, He looks pre fairly bloodied now from uh, the attacks from Thumbclaw, though. I'll toll the dead. Very well. Let me Wisdom make my save uh, He gets, unfortunately, a Wisdom 20, uh, non-natural. As he succeeds from the Toll of the Dead, your bonging noise rings out. And as the darkness is fading away, it seems to fade almost into his body. You can see this wisping of darkness or, uh, uh, along the edge, sort of like dry ice. And he uh, just sort of seems to enjoy the sound of that sonorous tone more than anything. You know what I'm gonna do? Um, I'm gonna healing word the dwarf. And then is the dwarf I do within that, range? I think so. Certainly. What's the healing word of the when day? I do that, he gets an attack of opportunity um, from my voice of authority. <clears throat> well, he ain't gonna make one. What's that? I said the dwarf. The dwarf ain't gonna make one. But uh, what's your um, what's your uh, healing word of the day? And can you roll that for me? Uh, I mean, he can make an attack opportunity, but only against Pox. Here's... <laughs> Get back up and help us. <clears throat> All right, roll healing. Shit, three. <laughs> <laughs> 
you grant him just enough energy. Uh, and as he, uh, you, you see that healing word, get back up and help us flow through his body, uh, sealing just some of the, the most grievous of wounds uh, right around the edge of his leg. And one, like it was this big tear across where his heart is at. He just sort of goes, oh, I oh, thank you. I can't believe him. I think I'm gonna live. I'm not getting up. <laughs> and he just places his head back down onto the ground. Goosh. What else would you like to do? Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that thing was pretty, pretty fragile, that bridge. Um, yes, that bridge is pretty fragile. I used both my actions. I probably just end my turn. All right. You end your turn in Groga. Now that you've taken your time to sprint all the way onto the other side, and I've placed the enemies back where you previously were. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, what would you like to do? Yeah, I think I have to run back across the other way. <laughs> Grog, you know, what, what, right. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go there. Go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her? Now keep going. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, stop right there. <laughs> As soon as you get there, right around the corner of the pillar, you see the drow matron uh, stand there, kneeling down over top of the goop, her hand nearly touching with it uh, as she raises some of it upwards. You can see that uh, much of her body is blackened and bruised. You can see blood flowing down from open wounds all across from where she, you, the rocks and the terrible current underneath where you had thrown her was like a meat grinder, right? And her body, as destroyed and torn up as it is, you can see this like shell of what her skin once was, almost like this porcelain doll that has been cracked forth. And beneath you can see this shadowy darkness within where her eye once was, the like deep red, uh, reddish eyes of the drow instead holds within it this just empty black sockets as though somebody already dead. You can see beneath her, uh, some of her bone exposed seems to gleam like a metal, almost like adamantium uh, that's inside of the where the, the inner skeleton is at. And when she looks up at you, she like fuse forth <laughs> a little bit of uh, like, like sewer water spews out, but with it comes fire that burns along the edge of the gunk. And she is like, tightens her grip, the what's left of that bo- that uh, metallic skeleton of a hand left on one of her shadowy blades as she sees you and feels vengeance within her soul. What else would you like to do? <laughs> I don't know, Chuck, you're not looking so good. Um, I'll, I'll yell out to the group, the, 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 that matron is over here on the other side of the wall. I'll come around the side so she can't see me. <laughs> uh, presumably, I, uh, she'll come after me, but I, I want to keep line of sight here, so she has to come over to me if she uh, wants to. Wants I to. understand. You want to play? You want to play ball? You're gonna have to play in my court. Yeah. All right. Uh, is that your turn? Yep. Yeah. Double move. All right. We go to the Drow Gladiator. In that case, uh, we've got Xanthar. We've got a few more strikes coming for you. Are you ready? He's muted. Okay, he's good. He's good. We got a we got a thumbs up. We got a twenty five to breach. That's a hit. We got an eleven to breach. That's a mess. We've got a fifteen to breach. Mess. And a fourteen to breach. Mess. Very nice for you. Uh, he only does seven slashing damage as the whirlwind of blades comes once again. He sort of grunts uh, as he, he digs into your flesh, looks over towards Thumbclaw Big Axe, and you can tell that he's feeling as though this may not have been the most successful venture. Uh, and he just sort of like grabs onto the mechanical uh, creature and then <clears throat> and tries to lift him into the water. But alas, he is not strong enough. And the robot does not move whatsoever in the slightest. Pox, we go to you. You well, wonderful, amazing doctor. Who, what can heal a man just by looking at them? What I will, will be. Well, now that you're better, <laughs> um, let me. 
Oh! Uh, <laughs> looks like you can use some help. Grab. You gonna, you gonna do your shame? Inflict wounds. <laughs> what do you know? Another <laughs> inflict wound. <clears throat> Brad, have you noticed that all of Josh's characters are super predictable? Hex, Eldritch Blast. Oh, I'm gonna run up and hit Necrotic hey, I thought <laughs> about mixing it up, but I was like, you know, they're right there. I might as well do it. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just being playful. Come on. You've done actually a lot of different things. You've done a lot of different things. Well, don't count that yet. It is 27, but I got to roll the hit first. Oh, I'm aware. I'm aware. <laughs> yeah, 26. I'm going to guess that hits. <clears throat> well, hold on. Hold on. Uh, you might still miss. Roll with advantage. Because you're flanking. All right. Yeah, still the 26. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that hits. <laughs> Uh, 26 to hit, 27 uh, necrotic damage. <laughs> well, you almost had it evenly matched. You almost did. Almost. Uh, you reach a hand out, and as the necrotic energy surges forth into his backside, uh, just like the first one, his limbs begin to die of die off. The uh, strange, like, dry, else, uh, dry ice melting stuff into the air suddenly lashes backwards, Richard, with, like, some act of retribution. And the drow there just sort of barely fragilely stands uh, on one singular leg left. He, like, almost laying on the ground, turns around to face you, to face his enemy, and spits at your feet. And his last dying breaths. I'd really like to kick him as a bonus action, but I know I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Just, like, kick his shin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's going to have to be it for me. Uh, we go to the uh, drow assassin, the matron. Uh, she slowly rises, makes her way over towards the side, sees mighty Xanthar with his big uh, celestial wings uh, and the glorious armor, the flowing hair, and she just can't help but be attracted by what she sees. She wants a piece of him, or maybe she wants all of him, uh, and that studly, handsome face of his. Uh, she calls out to you very weakly uh, and says, You, what are you? Do you reply, Xanthar? You're muted. You are muted, Xanthar. I have no idea. <laughs> she, uh, you, you can see her grip tense a, a little bit, and she says, of course you know what you are. How, what happened? Where did you come from? did this and she turns around like gestures with a flick of a knife uh towards the goop at the center lady what happened to you <laughs> <laughs> rocks my good lady you've seen some finer days <laughs> <clears throat> Well, seeing as no one will, will particularly reply, or, or Xanthar won't, but Pox, you will, uh, she's going to look over to where you're at. Uh, like this horrid stench uh, makes its way out of her mouth, the spewing of fire and pestilence. Uh, and as it spews forth, uh, it echoes and gets wider and wider. And I do mean echoes as in it like repeats itself, going forward wave by wave at a time. Uh, and I need everyone within... Uh, a, what is that, a 30 foot cone of her as she spews that strange corrupted breath. Uh, I need all of you to make me constitution saving throws. Does that include your own guy? Uh, hell yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> She's a woman after my own heart, you know, collateral damage, <laughs> it happens. 
You wouldn't have to be uh, ready to cast any kind of fireballs lately, would you? I mean, you never know. Ooh. Is that, is that a nat 20? Is that a nat 20 right there? Is that what I see? That's incredible. Uh, what do you what do you want? Personal or group success, Santhar? Group success. Sure, very well. What is everybody else doing? What is what your saving throws? Pox? You have a 14. Too. With less? Uh, ah. Can roll that extra D4. There it is. Boop. That's a 16. Boop. Hey, what do you know? The 16 is good. Uh, as that strange p flaming pestilence breath spews across the room or the floor, uh, Xanthar the White presents his, his big old mace up. This radiant light sh shines out from his feathers, his wings. This guarding wall appears, uh, and suddenly the breath weapon doesn't even seem to go past his body. It just hangs there for a few moments, uh, just this haze yeah. like fog spewing out in front of the area. And then the light shines through it all the way out to where she's at. And as the light smashes into her body, you watch as she tumbles backwards and plummets into the goop. Oh. Ooh. Not back this time. <laughs> Her turn is over. And Solana, we go to you. She's gonna come back. You hear the sound of goop moving upwards. Okay. I, I, I would just like to say, if a one, if a nat one turns Xanthar into that, I'm scared of what this nat 20 is going to do to her. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else concerned here? Anybody? No, just me. It's going to be a demon. <laughs> okay, I'm going to um, stand over here so I can kind of see... You, when you arrive going around the corner, you arrive mm -hmm. just in time to see one metallic bony hand, just slight bits of skin plummeting down into the goop. Like the very edge of her rate of her cape flowing down uh into the into the stuff. There's like a slight little like mixture of black, almost like an ink cloud from an octopus. So when Xanthar fell in and this angel guy came out, it was only one round, right? Didn't have to sue for yeah. longer? Okay. Well, it might have been for longer, excepting, of course, that in D&D &D 5e, uh, keeping a player out of combat for like a few hours or a day or something like that is a really shitty decision for the player's experience. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, so it's going to happen in a round because I'm not an asshole. <laughs> I appreciate that. I do. <laughs> so... Well, at least we not about this. That... Yeah, DM, I'm gonna need you yeah. to roll deception. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled right. 11 D. <laughs> I'm going to then hold my action and prepare a second level chromatic orb fire style for if the moment that I see a creature rise up out of the goop. Well done. We will do that. Uh, in that case, we'll go to Thumbclaw Big Axe. Uh, and Thumbclaw looks down at the drow in his last dying breaths. The drow looks up at Xanthar with a look of awe on his face, nearing adoration, perhaps even potential worship, as this light shines out and defeats whatever magic that his mistress has just used. Uh, and in those, wor those, those moments, he, looking up at Xanthar, says, for the first time, like saying something, saying, what you've done was impossible. This power you hold, I will follow you to the ends of the, the great subjacent itself. Perhaps you can stand against it, stand against the monstrosity. Maybe with your powers, we could take back our home. And as he's giving this mo uh, this uh, you know speech, he says, please, Allow me to, Thumbclaw Big Axe takes his big mighty fist and just raises it up in the air and goes, squish, and the bird is shattering the skull, 
spraying the brains all over the ground uh, and just and just completely thrashes and tears apart the drow's body. Everyone saw that wasn't me this time, right? <laughs> and my friend's comment is over. <laughs> What'd you like to do? Oh, Search God. the bodies. Search you. Who are you? Yes. No oh, idea. That's a good question. I'm going to lower the wall of corpses. Very well. You lower said wall, uh, and the stream of pink goop will disappear. You think I'm going to inspect Xanthar, or well, <laughs> the artist formerly known as Xanthar. Um, but I'm going to, I want to cast, oh, I'm going to cast Detect Evil. You uh, walk uh, over detect- to speak with him, and Thumbclaw is still zip, 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 <laughs> still pounding into the body. You could probably stop there, Thumbclaw. Oh, I'll cast Detect Evil and Good. I'll have to upcast it, though. Um, Are you sure? I'd like to see if he's a Celestial Aberration, Elemental, Fey, Fiend, or Undead. Uh, uh, as you cast this, first and foremost, Xanthar, you may tell them if your alignment has changed, if it remains the same. Um, I believe it's chaotic. Hold on, let me check something. Quick. Chaotic good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you do sense a presence of the extra planar within his body. Uh, you you can sense that there is the a uh, a divine nature to his soul. You actually feel a a, a resonant, uh, there's some sort of a resonance with his soul and your own. Um, something that you've only felt in other followers of Gerda the Pale. You see, you feel his soul like a mirror reflecting yours back to you. And you know them, know him as brother in this way. Really? Lexi. I'll, I'll, pull, I'll pull my hand on his shoulder and say, welcome, welcome, brother. It, it, does it feel like Xanthar, though, still? Or, I mean, do I have any... Yes, are you Xanthar? No idea. I don't remember anything before this. Do you... Do you remember when you were telling- us? You seem familiar. But I don't remember. When you were down there, did you see, like, a robot kind of guy? He was He's, like, this tall, like, shiny armor... Um, weirdly talked about his balls like, shockingly, I mean not like a crazy amount but like more times than you would expect a robot to talk about. But Yes, that's a follow up question. Him? You have balls yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. I was wondering <laughs> if I didn't want to be like the one to lead with it. So thank you. <laughs> I I really <laughs> must <laughs> study you. I, I'm very curious as you if you truly are Xanthar going from your Warforged form to this one of flesh. I need to do some ex- examination, if you don't mind, for science. <laughs> Hi, I know you've just you've just started existing. Can I check your balls and maybe cut them off? <laughs> I'll, I'll leave the balls intact. Uh, maybe just you know, just a little incision here or there. I just want to see what your what your insides look like. If you are core forged at your core. You are a very different type of doctor, sir. Normally people say, hi, I'm Pox. Where do you come from? But no, no. Pox says, hey, let me play with your balls. Maybe mix them around the insides. You know, get in there. I never said I was inefficient. I would, you know. Just want to make sure for science that this is our Xanthar, and perhaps by knowing if he st- carries any of his previous form inside of him, maybe we could help restore his memory. I mean, I have another thought that involves less cutting. It doesn't check his insight, but I think it could at least confirm that there is some sort of lineage between these two people. We are all good putting our scissors away. Okay, for the moment. Okay. 
I'm going to cast Locate Object, focusing on Xanthar's plate armor. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, as you, uh, yeah, he, he, Xanthar will be very quick to remind you that he does not yet have plate armor. Oh, mail. sorry. Not, uh? plate, not plate armor. His armor. His yeah. pseudo looking like armor. Uh, uh, as you send the sensor out, this uh, divination magic, these seeker swarms just fire off in all directions. Um, and one of them immediately, like snapping, comes right back to you. And it seems as though you're looking at it. So either they swapped armor in there, or this man is wearing <laughs> Xanthar's armor. Um, do you have a name, sir? I'm sorry, we keep assuming that you're called Xanthar, but it sounds like you might not be. Do you have a different... Could you please put the scissor sounds really distracting? <laughs> do any more, like... At the very least, we need a name to fill on the paperwork, okay? That's like step one here before <laughs> jumping to the OR, okay? I get it, you're excited, I, I know the type, but focus. Name? I don't remember who I am, but you seem familiar. All of you. Do you know this person? And I would take off my mask and change my face to Xanthar, Warforged face. Ooh. Let me get this straight. You want your biological face to become a metal face. Just the, the outer look of it, yes. So the contoured edges? Yes. This has got to be the creepiest, most horrific thing. <laughs> this is like out of a horror show because the warboard is just like flat plate, right? So for you, this is like skin that is just like... You know, like, like you'd be looking at a wall of skin, but like, like slick and like shiny, maybe rubbery. I mean, it almost look like what's that? What's that? Um, like that putty, the silly putty. Silly putty. You yeah. You just have a, a silly putty face. Uh, yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. It's horrific. Are there are there mirrors in Sidral? Yes, there are mirrors in Sidral. There's a goddess of mirrors. Her name is Gerda the Pale. <laughs> As, as it would, as fate would have it. Yes. This, it this character, this, this person. Have you seen them? It, it just. Something also, where did he go? <laughs> I don't know. Where did Groga go? He's gone. I think his internet probably sure. died. Oh Give no. him a couple, couple minutes. He'll be back. But yes, Do this we face. also want to address the dwarf too? This is a. He can wait. Oh, yeah, the door. He's stable. I just don't want him walking out the door and walking away. Sir, um, that bridge is a little weak, so if you need to rest, I promise we won't kill you. We're not bad people. Um, since, you know, like, enemy of my enemy is my friend, so we're all, we'll be all nice, but I want you off that bridge before it collapses, and I don't want to walk over and then make it collapse. So if you could come over here, that would be swell. A sword off! I'm not moving. I'm staying right okay. here. See, he's fine. Okay, he's... Yeah, you're right. I feel he's like fine. we should search okay. these bodies for plate mail. Yeah, oh no, God, I'm convinced Xanthar. this is Xanthar. Yeah, you're right. It is. <laughs> it really is. Okay. I'm... He might not know that he's Xanthar, but... Just... Just an urge. I've got some intuition. Do you, Do you feel like I would fireball you? Like not directly, but like indirectly. Do you do you get that sense at all? Is that anything that that would that would be a dick move? I, I I've never done it before, so I I haven't. I just I just was curious, and maybe you like felt such. Okay. Okay. To be fair, I feel like most people would call that a dick move, Salana. That... This is true. This is true. That's why I'll never do it. So that's you know. Interesting. Interesting. Um, should we introduce ourselves again, Ish? Do you know our names at all? Do you want us to call you Xanthar still, if that was originally? Should we explain what happened? Okay, so you were trying to jump over the goo, and you didn't, and you kind of, like, fell into it, like, in a well, very bad way. fell into it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you tripped on something that was, like one in shape like it was like shaped like the number one um and so you like kind of fell in um you were a robot as, before as he moves over to talk to you and like you, you watch as his big magnificent wing just sort of 
ruffles against the back of Groga's armor, his head, and just completely blocks Groga from the conversation. <laughs> a little rude. Um, oh, but maybe you're not used to having those. Um, so you have wings now. I don't know if you're aware that they're there, but they're they are there. Um, Groga, are you? He, he dips out from underneath the wing, joins the conversation. <laughs> I'm here. Okay, hey, great. Mark, but yeah, should we introduce ourselves or? Sure. Um, so who are you people? Well, as of, you know, yesterday, uh, I've come to equate myself with you all. Uh, it seems that you have been traveling together for some period of time before. Uh, yes, that is uh, Groga over there, uh, a follower of Gerda the Pale. Uh, this is Solana here. Uh, not a witch. Um, uh, I am Thank Pox you. here. Thank you. I am Pox, and... Here we are. Oh, and this is Thumbclaw. Uh, as you, oh, as yes. you say that, uh, you say everyone's names. Thumbclaw big eyes just sort of goes, uh, like, and then Solana says, oh, this is Thumbclaw. And he goes, and like, uh, and he just sort of like holds himself proudly. Apologies, <laughs> Thumbclaw. I thought you were still occupied smashing things. Um, He used to be called Thumbclaw Big Axe, but then we lost his big axe. So I think he's just Thumbclaw now. I like yeah, that's like an, yeah, that felt important to share first, right? Like that's a yeah, top priority. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. We also have a, a, a thing in a barrel over there. Uh, don't be alarmed. It's, it's just a barrel. It's just, hey. it's don't, don't worry Thumbclaw, it's just a barrel. No, no, he's supposed yeah, to protect he... the contents of the barrel. As you turn around and point towards the barrel, you notice from afar that the barrel has rolled and sort of like shuffled over to one of the the uh, contraptions for this big, magnificent machine that you're looking at. Uh, it's just right at the edge of where this huge pylon of purple arcane crystal has energy just sort of like being absorbed upwards into this projector of some this projector cannon of some kind and like a little hand is making its way out towards the uh the lip of the switch and just sort of barrel barrel no down down drop it <laughs> drop it he's like little barrel lid slides Wait. back down Excuse me, I'm just, I'm so sorry. He's not, he's not very well trained yet. We're working on it. It's, it's, it's new. It's new. Um, he was a rescue. Um, so sorry. I'll, I'll go over to him and like drag him over with us. So he's near us and not doing something. You're gonna drag, you want to drag the barrel? Just like... Yes. With my very okay. strong arms. <laughs> It's very slow going, but eventually you pull the barrel with you over towards the rest of the group. There's Perfect. slight resistance um, as the thing inside just goes uh, communicating to you. No, I want it. I want it. What is it? I, I look over and point at the barrel and say, what's in the barrel? Um, thumb claw. Could you turn around and watch the bridge for us? Stay very focused on the bridge. Uh, Thumbclaw, naturally, as he is a very good listener, will uh, go off towards the edge of the bridge and look directly down at it. Perfect. You notice, however, as he steps onto the bridge that like some of it cracks, <laughs> some pieces shift, uh, and a little bit more of the bridge, like, collides off in the water. 
actually, Thumbclaw, can you watch the bridge from the steps before the bridge? Like, not directly on the bridge? This is, that was my fault. Poor communication on my end. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's fine now, right? Um, yes, yes. I have an idea. Perhaps Beryl could peer into his mind. Oh, into the dwarf's mind? No, into New Xanthar. Oh. I mean, that would help. We should probably ask permission, right? I'm trying to teach it's either Carol It's either the Nothic or the respect. scissors. You get to choose. Okay, so the Nothic is just gonna, like, take a little peeksy in your mind, and it's fine. It's just, he's just a little, he's just a little curious. What's the Nothic? Um, uh, Beryl, could you, um, no one's gonna attack you, but could you come say hi? <clears throat> the little lid of the barrel just sort of... Uh, as these, this little... Uh, the top of this, well, actually quite large, uh, greenish eye, sort of alien, uh, looks over, peers at, at uh, Xanthar. Xanthar, I am he's immediately going to try and dig through your mind to find some secrets. Uh, <laughs> Don't uh, Would you like to make your saving throw? What was your, wisdom? Yes. Wisdom or charisma? Thirteen. Wisdom. Uh, uh, congratulations, my friend. Uh, you have magically succeeded on your saving throw, and so the, the, the beast does not get to learn anything new of you. But you can hear an angry sort of... sort of a noise, and the barrel lid slides back down. I'm guessing he was unsuccessful. He looks a little irritated. Usually when he gets a secret, he's kind of more of like a jumping up and down kind of excited. You continue with this bit. I need to study this scoop. I'd like to come over here to <laughs> uh, what's you remaining do... over here. Yeah! What do you want to do with the goop? I want, I want to check the bodies for plate mail. Sure. Like, go ahead, uh, Xanthar. Go ahead and make me a uh, investigation check on the bodies. Investigation. Pox, what do you want to do? I would like to cut off some of it and store it. Ah. Sure. By all means, go ahead and give me a uh, for you. Give me an arc. Uh, um, give me one with uh, guidance. Um, uh, uh, Groga and Dex. I mean, you could do sleight of hand too, I guess. I'll go with Archon if you want. Yeah. Um, and then Solana and Grogo, any, any checks you'd like to make while I'm going around the table? Um, I'm going to turn to the Nothic and say, um, I'll give you another secret if you tell me what exactly this machine does. Uh, the... Uh, Nothic naturally obviously agrees to that. Um, communicates in your mind, this is an, this is an incredible deal, uh, and awaits for you to, to tell it yet another secret. Okay. Uh, oh, gosh. I almost like, an adi- like a fiend, like he's fiending for, the, for this addiction. Uh, he just can't get enough of it. Uh, you barely get the words out of your mouth before he already says, yes! Uh, Grogu, what did you want to do? I mean, I'll, I'll look at the, the bodies here with the... Um... Um, it's cleric formerly known as Anther. Yeah. The not the not cleric not Xanthar. Uh, very well. Then you can have adva- uh, inv- or advantage on your investigation check. Uh, <clears throat> going first with the Arcana as I wait for the uh, advantage. You can roll the investigation a second time. Take the higher of the two totals. Uh, Pox, you oh. easily are able to take a shred of this stuff. Sort of like, when you try to cut it at first and study the thing, uh, it doesn't seem to cut. It just sort of like, like a slimy ooze type thing, just sort of like rebounds, it's rubbery, it sort of pushes back against this, uh, whatever implements you're using. Um, and then just sort of like wiggles out. 
Uh, and on your second attempts to try and store some of it, you reach out with your mind and sort of tell the goop to separate. Um, and you feel this arcane pressure building in your mind as the goop seemingly starts to respond to you. Uh, and you feel for an, for just for an instant, the goop simply is seemingly saying uh, in your mind something like, what? You're cutting out. Uh, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. One I'm just of us. Saying, one of us. <laughs> yeah, uh, as the, as some of it just sort of slides into your flat. Mm. Now, with that stored, can I, or from the Arcana slash, or should I make another roll? Can uh -huh. I ascertain exactly the composition of this? You can make an arcana, a history, uh, a... Mm, yeah, that's that's pretty tough. It's a pretty tough thing to do. Good luck, sir! Yeah, you made, you, you, made, you will try. Medicine? Uh, yeah, take a medicine. That's, I'll, I'll, I'll see that in order. I can see a medicine. Uh, <clears throat> the investigation check. I still haven't received your other one, so I'll just take the 18. Uh... When you're looking through these bodies, you, unfor you unfortunately do not find plate mail uh, inside of them. You find that the that they're using some very tough, like these breastplates uh, that they were wearing, as well as some of this like armed splints that help them to uh, parry off attacks. That increases their armor class just because of how dexterous they are. They've got a high dexterity score. And you do find these daggers that have these infer this infernal script on it um, that used to be drow daggers. You're kind of, it's obvious to anyone who's been in the, the Great Subjacent for any length of time, but perhaps not you, that the that this, uh, this script is not usually on drow weapons. Um, so it looks like very elven, very nice sort of, nice curves and flow to it. Uh, but then this harsh script that is in like very rigid, ragged cuts uh, into the metal looks as though it was almost brutally stamped into the thing uh, as opposed to crafted with love or care or precision. Some of them are like at odd angles uh, on the edges of the blade. And the armor has inside of it that same script, um, not on the outside, but on the inside of the thing. You can definitely tell that this stuff is cursed. Cursed. Mm. Yes, definitely got an infernal curse on it of some kind. Um, uh, if I pick them up and take them, but don't tune or wear them, is that the fun thing about D and D is? You don't really know, uh, but you can do it. Uh. I don't think I don't think I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Very well, you I do not. Probably if you bring it to the wizard, I might be able to try to get more info on that, possibly. Yeah, curse? Not necessarily remove curse, but if I do identify, I might learn more about the rules of it, potentially. Uh, while y'all are investigating and doing your, your said thing, Solana, you ask Beryl, like, what this place is, um, and the psionic speech comes to you and you hear the the note that or you see you hear barrel saying to you this was well actually he sends you images uh mental projections of several wizards arrayed around this this place uh four of them one at each pylon flipping levers all at once in unison um energy sort of charging into the base of these uh these structures these cannon uh and then you watch as creatures appear led by chains by other wizards carrying forth and these like brutish war machines much like thumbclaw you see here uh you see in your mind an image of creatures like people like normal people from the verdo estate uh being dragged down here, screaming for their lives as they're thrown towards the gunk. Uh, you see their bodies morphing and changing, becoming other things. In this moment, when the when Beryl gets to describe that, you see the image flashing into like a mammoth, flashing again into this large snake, flashing again into these multi-limbed forms. Um, all kinds of stuff you see in the blink of an eye, just sort of like hundreds of different forms drawing forth from 
whatever is inside of the gunk. But you also see uh, the some of these people being dragged in chains across the bridge towards the other doorway, the big gigantic gate. Uh, you can see the wizards using their magic and uh, pulling various levers against the uh, uh, adjacent to the sides of the gates to make them open. And then inside seems dark, dark and shrouded, but you can see infernal script nailed into the walls, this glowing evil red text. And at the core of this room, it's sort of this long rectangular thing. You see a singular table of slate with chains dragged off the sides, people thrown onto them, exposed to this strange sound of the oceans roaring, this tide out into the distance. And then you see these people shot with a beam of energy and in, a, in the flash of an instant, their bodies expand and growing. Chitin filling along the edges, squid-like of apparatus pour, uh, pouring out as they become Ulchiore. We really suck, you know? It, it feels like every time you learn about something bad, it's like we caused it, you know? It's like we were like the worst things that happened to this planet. God damn it. <clears throat> I tried my best to relay all this information to the rest of the group. <laughs> as best sure, as I can sure. summarize. <clears throat> you continue relaying this to the rest of the group. Uh, Beryl is intently waiting on your secret, I'll have you know. Uh, I sent it in the group chat. I sent it directly to you. Oh, I so see. So it should be, okay. it should be there. Hopefully. Got you, got you. No, it's yes. cool. I'll, I'll, I'll check in a moment. Um, you begin relaying this to your team as uh, we have the medicine check. And Pox, as she's beginning to relay this to the team, you look down at the, the stuff in the flask and you can't quite make up its, its medical combination, like whatever is in this. It seems beyond your advanced learning. But the closest thing you have that you've seen before is like you can see the liquid in the flask seeming to like gray out become this strange almost like the consistency of seagull poop uh this little whitish crackly sort of goopy mixture uh as it fades and dies in the in the flask and just seemingly stops the closest thing you have uh to understanding the molecular makeup is like volcanic ash after it's been all of the energy has expired, has been expended inside of it. And the molecules have just broken down into barely surviving remnants of whatever it once was. I'd like to cast Revivify. <clears throat> you cast Revivify uh, into the flask. And when you do so, the gunk life begins to return to it. The, the whitish uh, ash begins to like almost like flubber it sort of like begins extending and breaking out of the oh my god i'm so dated flubber is not a thing that's new anymore that's like super old it's a good bit old now <laughs> sorry uh anyway the as the uh the gunk like spits out and spews forth from the white ash in between. The, it retain, it, like the pinkish coloration returns to it. The life begins to move around. Uh, it like does this, a few little twitches against the edge of the glass uh, and then begins to fade and become white and ashen again. But for an instant, for a moment, you've brought it back to life. Hmm. Yeah, I really want to cut off a piece of your body. <laughs> I need to know for science. Just, just a little incision. I need to know what... I need to know what your skeleton looks like. This is more important to me than you know. I think I'm okay with that. Just a cut. Why is, why is this so important to you? For the sake of science. 
insight. <laughs> Uh, so long as you accept this PvP, you may roll Deception. He has rolled Deception, thus giving his Okay, consent. okay, I, that's it, accept. Okay, 25 okay. is pretty strong, pretty strong. <laughs> oh, it was on the 20 and they rolled to an 8. Oh, okay. man. No. <sighs> Seems he wants it for science. I need to do this for science. For the greater good look- of life. A says it's for the greater good of life, and you can't help but look at that silly putty warforged face, completely devoid of any emotion, any mouth, any any no nasal structure, uh, anything that would give you a hint, a sign of life, and you know that this guy has seen some shit. He's seen the difference between life and death, and he he needs to know what side of it Xanthar's walking on or so help him God, he will become an even scarier, more horrific being with that awful, flat, fleshy face of his and that he puts on his mask. Okay, thank God. <laughs> can I use a perception check or an insight check? Yeah, you can do an insight check too. Again, it's the same 25. 25? Yeah, he's got a deception 25. Good luck. Um, can I guidance myself? Hell yeah, you can. What are your guiding words? And by the way, uh, you do, because you're using guidance, Pox, you do watch as he basically says, like, reveal your secrets. Uh, and then insight checks you, like, gives you the ones <laughs> over. I hope you're not lying. I. It is for greater life. I mean, I do believe him. And. Ah, 17. No dice. You look at that masked face and you can't see any emotion in it because it's a ma- it's it's masked. Makes Doesn't sense. reveal any information. Well, do you need any help then with this? Should we like hold him down? Do you need like I just I I've never assisted um with a surgical procedure before, but I feel like normally multiple hands, so like what do you need? Just make sure he's comfortable. I can Numb the area. I'm going to use uh, this kit and just make a small incision. See what I can find right there. I just guide Xanthar to sit down. They just kind of like like push on the shoulders. Like okay. <laughs> I don't think I really want to be cut open. So just just a little yeah, bit. Um, just just hold now, him down. Naturally, <laughs> you are well within your rights. Uh, to declare this as a PvP action, we will not perform surgery on you. Uh, I feel like that's a pretty, you know, normal thing that to, to be like, yeah, you can't perform surgery on your friends, right? Well, I mean, I don't know, you know Brad, do you perform surgery on your friends? It depends. Have I known him for no. over 24 hours? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's the cutoff here. I feel like so. I would defend myself in this if it was PvP. Very well. I think that Xanthar has given you the he would not like to be cut open, um, and thus, via the rules of PvP, I will not allow you to cut open Xanthar's character. What if you I'll, cut I'll yourself open? open? Just just a tiny bit, like on your arm or something. Okay, let's 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 circle back to this later. I get uh, that this is important for scientific discovery, but like this is kind of he's had a lot today. Um, I don't think he wants to be overwhelmed. Um, do you want like a piece of his hair? Would that help? No, we don't want to lose the hair. No, never no, mind. My hair take is, that back. My hair no. is far too beautiful. Yeah, no, I don't I care agree. about the hair. Sure. I care what's on the inside. I need to know oh. if he's still a war forged on the inside. You do believe that without making an incision, sort of uh, seeing the, the 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 humanity in front of you, or the biological bits of it, you realize that you could probably. G- glean whether or not he was senti- or human or, or a living biological creature instead of a warforged. If you had like a stool sample or maybe like a few drops of waste that could come from his frontal shit, section. Shit in his hand. Yeah, you could take a shit in his hand. When you said waste from the front. Oh, sister, get again. Yeah. Please elaborate. <laughs> Got a bottle? I need you to go around that pillar. <laughs> It's an old Gatorade bottle, but you'll be fine. It's 
or even a drop of blood. I can do it that way. Do you bleed? You bleed. <laughs> no, that's that's his line. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, <laughs> something simple. Did he get slashed before? Did we see, like, some of his slash injuries? Oh, from certainly, the yeah. Oh, He's yes, let some, me treat that for blood. you. Uh-huh. Oh God! Here, here's some bandages. I'd like to get out a medical kit and treat his wounds, while also, you know, keeping I'm some of the bloody the bandages. <laughs> Santar, will you allow him to bandage you up? Will I allow him to what? Bandage you up? Do you want it? Will you allow him to dress your wounds? I'll leave the cutting utensils over there. How are you gonna cut the bandage? You can have some blood. Yeah. You can have some blood. I'll rip it. Blood. He's not cutting me over. Oh, good, good. Yeah, okay, no, I'll take the blood that's already there. And I'll just... Well, you know, I can you stitch... Wish, you may expend a use of a healer's kit uh, as though with a healer feet. Yes. Let us... Let us do. As you patch him up, yeah. bandage him, bandage him, and take away some of their, your... your uh, take up some of that blood from the bloody bandages and it does appear as though he bleeds mm -hmm. a little bit of a glisten to his blood it's shiny blood now can I ascertain it smells like sugar from these fluids yeah. Yeah. Need it smells like so metallic or oil or whatever warforged stuff was in there oh yeah sure 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 um, go ahead well, and make me an insight check or a medicine check or an arcana check or, or just if it's fully not warforged like human you yeah said what what role arcana medicine survival nature uh, uh. fuck you D, D beyond that was almost a nat 30. <laughs> oh, oh that it would hit get you past it impossible yeah i'm uh, well wait do i have a Do I have a inspiration. inspiration? I don't think I do. Uh, let me double check whether you've got. We've got Solana at three, Groga at zero, Xanthar at zero, Pox at zero. Y'all have spent them. Mm, very well. Right. What do I, I glean do... from a 12, DM? Uh, you see that what you hold in front of you is angelic blood. Uh, it's got a little shiny glisten to it. Um, so you can tell there's like a faint aroma of like candy that comes from the blood, uh, something that's very, very sweet and sugary, maybe like maple syrup sap. Um, and uh, it doesn't appear to have like any immediate like feel iron. I mean, it's got normal levels of normal iron in it, probably. Iron. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's any blood, like, or I mean, blood. It doesn't seem as though there's any oil in the blood, like. Seems like normal Azamar blood. Very no well. sign of Warforged here. Mm -hmm. Well, then, uh, that works for me. I'll move back over here. Uh, continue, uh, talk to the dwarf, I don't know. Interesting, interesting. Okay, dwarf, man, okay, I know you're so tired. But if you come over here, I might be able to help cure you. Um, and I don't want you uh, sitting on the collapse bridge. Um, I don't want to walk over there and make it collapse and kill us both. So I need you to walk towards me so I can make you feel better. If you saw this, but I was just being attacked by a drow with a whole bunch of weapons. I think your skinny little ass is going to be just fine coming across the bridge. So you think and I'm skinny? And I've been here for a little while now. I think I'll be just fine. Oh, On yes. Side of the bridge. I walked across the bridge. One is probably fine. Okay. I will walk over. The and... bridge rumbles and shudders as you watch ac walk across it. Uh, some of the slate seems to like shift around. Yeah, you recognize that more weight on the bridge could be very bad. Um, but did you make it across yeah. just fine to stare down at the, the, the dwarf? Hey, um, sir, um, so I, I can't really 
Okay, I'm gonna tr can I do like a medicine check to try and at least like I know he's stable, but can I like yeah. at least do some things? I'll even like press agitation just to get the blood off of him because I can't actually yeah. heal him, but I want to make him feel better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can you press know. agitation the blood off. Oh, yeah. certainly. You can also do like, I mean, a medicine check if you want to just tell how wounded he is. Yeah, or you can just I'll do, do that. Probably useful to know how close he is to teetering on death. All right, here we yeah. go. Plus one. Ooh, that's a natural one. Nice. Let's go. Uh, would you like personal or group pain? Or one of your three I mean... inspirations. <laughs> yeah, or one of your oh, three. Oh, that's true. Actually, because mm, I'm on a bridge, I might break, and I'm yeah. nervous. Okay, true. I'll use. I will officially use an inspiration. All right, I'll sack an inspo. It's just like when I was a kid and I'd always hoard my candy till the candy would go bad and I couldn't enjoy it. It's the same thing with my inspiration. I just hoard it. So thank you. I need the reminder. Okay, 14. You were the happiest kid on Christmas and, or I mean on Halloween and yet no, no none of the candy rot in your teeth. You got the best of both worlds. All the excitement, none of the bad parts. Yeah, uh, with I 14. Didn't enjoy it, you know, yeah. <laughs> The with the fourteen, you can tell immediately that the dwarf is uh, at three hit points. Uh, seems as though, yeah, he was bleeding out uh, on the bridge to making death saving throws mid combat. You can tell that he's definitely not doing great. Uh, he probably already, already would have died if he wasn't like, you know, NPC. There's something going on. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, he, he, he just he has a new lease on life right now, but he's looking pretty bad. You reckon that he's probably at like maybe, maybe like 10% of what he could be at? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. Um, I can't do as much, but my friends can't. So um, I'm not exactly the strongest uh, here, but uh, let's just try to, um, I'm going to try and like, gently pick him up and walk back with him off the oh. bridge. He's trying to fight you as you I try might... to pick him up. Okay, do you want to walk then? Because you said that you couldn't walk and now you are gonna now you can't be carried. So what do you want? I just want you off the spot. He like slowly rises to his feet, grimacing in pain as he does some fresh blood pouring down the side of one of his wounds uh, just after you've pressed the digitation room clean. Uh, mm -hmm. And he points over towards the the levers, these golden sort of uh, apparatus. It's right on the sides of the doors. Um, you might not even recognize them as levers, but there's six, three to the left and three to the right. Uh, and he says, I cannot reach that. I need some kind of wizard spell to try and open it up. We need to get inside the gate. Oh, that is more quickly. important than anything else. It's, but is there like a time cap? Because in case you didn't notice, you're kind of almost dead, and I'm a little tapped out. So I would love for us to just kind of rest and hang out and kind of just like patch ourselves up and like, like, and also like to get to know each other a little bit. Like, I would like to know your name before I follow you into a mysterious door where on the other side I saw people getting turned into lobsters. Um, but that's maybe just me. But either way, I still think we should rest for a moment. So is this time sensitive or no? Rest? I'm so close to what, on the other side, this is what I've been w looking for. This is the greatest of, of all treasures that lies inside. And there's just one measly gate between us and that stuff inside. And you, I nearly dying on my deathbed. This is a miracle. I should be dead, but I am alive. And you want me nearly dead, somehow still alive, to put it all aside and just wait around? Given oh, come on, are... we're so close! Given that we are the reason just that you did wave miraculously your fancy survive. Magic hands and open the levers, come on! I'm tapped out. My Don't wavy hands just die. look dumb now. This is it. This is all I can do. It's just, I just, I got nothing. You don't got any spells like two and none of them can like move six levels at once well i'm a bad wizard 
Which, sorry. I can rage hand tell Jesus, but I still think we should short rest. He, he like makes a stamp with his foot, um, kind of angrily. The bridge <clears throat> shakes a little bit. You hear a push of a rock falling in the, uh, in the river below. And he says, of oh, all oh, the flaming wizards I gotta be around, it's this one. It's got, got spells. It's a bad one. Fuck. I'm getting off the bridge. No, I, no, bye, bye. <laughs> If you, if you want to fall to the bridge and make your little tantrums, that's up for you. I already have one child I'm trying to train. I don't need another. It's just, no. Nope. Out of here. You walk away, and he's already, like, trying to lean off the edge of the bridge and, like, see if he can grab the levers. Um, as he's, like, holding his side. If we get to the other side and there's another singular thing that we need to fight, we're all dead, sir. Is that what you want? Do you want to all die? Do you want to complete what you got so close to today? He, like, leans down from the railing, looks across, and goes, I, uh, no, I suppose not. Then he, like, finally listens to reason and just slides down onto the side of the door against the edge of the gate. That's where you want to be, sir. I will not stop you, but we are going to rest. We're going to do some bonding with our new-ish kind of old friend. And then we will figure out how to open the gates after we rest. What's your name? Uh, you yell, you, you like, tell him like, this yeah. is the, how it's going to be. It's going to be my way or the highway. Uh, listen, we, I don't, I don't care what you're doing, but this is what, this is what I'm going to do. And as you yell out to him, like, can you at least tell me your, your name? Um, he'll just say, uh, you could freaking call me Merlyle. And I will change, update his mini. Don't be rude about it, but. I suppose, why are you? Oh, I'm Solana. Um, that's, I mean, you kind of heard us doing introductions earlier, but you were kind of on the ground, like in pain. So, um, this is. It's hard to hear you. Okay, so and, this one. Uh, he's going to yeah. walk across the bridge over to where you are at. Sort of like making a shooing motion, like, like get on, I don't want to be on the bridge. And he okay. shoes you back um, towards the rest of the group. And then he's going to slide down against this wall. And just sort of like sit on the floor. Perfect. Okay. We we searched everything. Yes. Both of the gladiators had the same object. Oh, actually, you do have another one of those glass prisons, the cages, like the Rubik's cube, but with the darkness inside. There is another one of those that are made. Um, so, I forgot to mention that, that but they they only use one out of two. So, there's another one. We'll take, we'll, we'll take that, whatever it is. Sure, you can pick it up. When you pick it up, uh, you hear whispers uh, inside of it, sort of saying things like, How shall you see him? Pretty normal. Normal stuff. Naturally. So are we taking a rest? Not demonic. Oh. Probably demonic. I think so. We should I know take... I know a couple languages. Uh you do know a couple languages. You do. It's not something I understand. It doesn't seem to be. While we sleep, we should probably take watch, specifically for like other creatures, but also I kind of want to keep an eye on Beryl. I don't trust him with these levers. Um, so Beryl, you show me what these things do. Why do you want to activate them? Uh, psionically, uh, Beryl sends you an image again of him changing form back into a person. Like, he shows you an image of himself underneath the gigantic machine uh, as it fires into into the Nothic body and potentially becomes what he used to be. 
and he shows you that what he used to be is like this tall, dark, handsome uh, figure with like rippling muscles. And he's got like a really strong body with this huge cape flowing down behind him and a big wizard staff in hand with like this clockwork sort of mechanism thing at the top. Got a, a long chin like an Egyptian uh, uh, pharaoh. I really doubt that that's the real him, but at the same time, I really hope so, you know? <sighs> Is this already all charged up? Like, in theory, if we wanted to try and revert you, would we all just need to pull the levers and then it would change you, or...? Uh, the barrel lid rises slightly and then shakes up and down, yes. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, uh, group questions. Okay, I know you just guys just kind of heard gibberish. Um, just to recap, it sounds like this is the machine that formed barrel into barrel. I mean, not an actual barrel, but into the like the, the green eyed thing, uh, the no thick, not the barrel barrel, but you know what I mean. He, it sounds like he was originally you a brought human. one of those flaming assholes here with you. Hey, okay, excuse you, He's not like everyone. I don't know. Is that a deception check? Sure. Sure. Why you not? Hold this disadvantage. <laughs> Absolutely. One hundred percent. Minus one with disadvantage. Here we go. Okay, eleven. Ah. Oh wait, no. Did I roll twice? No. Oh. I think I rolled three, four. Yeah, three times. Roll three. The two oh my I gosh, originally... yeah, so many, so many rolls. I don't know why it clicked so many times. The two I actually saw were 11 and 14, so I was going with the 11. Sure, go with the 11. Uh, he looks over at the barrel and just like takes his meat cleaver and like holds it in two hands. Okay, it's- Puts it on his waist, doesn't say anything more. If there were a no thick, it was clearly changed here into one and could originally have been a perfectly kind person who didn't deserve to be turned or changed. So right. we helped them. Or he could have been a flaming asshole. I guess we'll find out afterwards. Hmm. Does everyone want to help me try and yeah. revert the Nothic? Sure. Yeah, for Fox, sure. Fox. We need everyone to be at the lever, so. Are we going to go in right now? With, did we actually launch a short rest? I didn't, didn't oh my God. Not yet. I don't think we've done anything yet. We can also wait till after we've rested. I just didn't know if we wanted to attempt this beforehand. Maybe it's kind of dumb to attempt it now, but I'm just very curious. Perhaps we should all sleep on it. Should rest briefly at a minimum, but keep an eye on that no think during that how, time. How about we do a full rest? Um, but we'll take watch so that the no fix never unsupervised. Very well. Only we had a war force. <laughs> if only. If only. <laughs> Would, um, would y'all like to array yourselves where you would like to long rest in the Tailspire? I was having I issues like really connecting Tailspire, but... Oh, hey! You, like, totally dropped out. Um, yeah, if you jump back... Or you can't connect to it at all? It was having issues reconnecting to it. I can, I'll try again. Maybe it... Uh, hmm. Could be itself. down. It could be a, a, like an outage. Are we, are we doing a full rest? I definitely need a full rest. I'm tapped out on spells. Me too. I want to cast um, a couple things here. Yeah, I only have one level two spell slot remaining. Go for it. Then cast away. I want to cast aid with like extended duration. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, so it would be 16 hours. Let me know when Everyone, you're back in. Yeah. Oh, there What's up? Oh, I'm talking to Brad. 
looks like it's I am reconnecting. I can take it the looks first like you're reconnecting and you look... I'm going to fall asleep leaning against the barrel for extra measures of... Hopefully if he like gets out of it, I'm jostled awake too. Extra precaution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, very well. So, uh, Xanthar and Pox and Groga, where would you like to go? I'm going to start here, because I'm going to start my shift, and I want to do things in the doing parts of the rest. I wish to study it. Very I well. I wish to study it. <laughs> well, we'll be back for like the... Actually, over this way. I'm walking there on that middle part there. <laughs> what do you, uh, you want to stand right where you are currently? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to precast aid during our long rest, right before the end of the long rest. Yeah, naturally. You can do that. Uh, and Grogu, you want to be in the same place? Yeah, so I can have line of sight kind of on everything other than. Yeah. Like right there. Sure. Uh, while y'all take your positions and begin your long rest, is there anything people would like to do as far as downtime goes uh, during the long rest? And Pox, this is your moment to shine. I would like to call upon that feeling I had where it was reaching out to me. Yes. And willing it to separate and go into the flask, things like that. I would will it to separate parts and come to my hand. Uh, you want the goop in the flask to come to your hand? No. New goop. New goop, goop and flask is okay. dead, correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You reach down to goop on ground uh, and like try and mentally communicate for it to come into your hand. Um, and you do see like a slight little wiggle of the goop. Uh, and it seems to try to be making its way towards your hand. Um, but it doesn't seem to be able to completely disconnect itself from the larger mass beneath. Try and cut it again? I would like to try and cut it again. As you attempt to cut it, uh, you may make a roll. A roll, rolly roll? Just a rolly roll. any of the previous options. Twenty-five. On the twenty-five and attempting to slice and sever the thing, you do feel like a mental screaming happen for a moment, and then you're, the scissors just sort of like slightly managed to get a little bit of it snapped off, broken in two. It almost looks to you as though the scissors and the goop itself has bent, as though it had like an iron hard consistency to it, and that the scissors have like more so shaved off a small thin bit of it enough for it to collapse, for its structure to collapse, rather than like the way you would typically think of a cut. Uh, but it does, it does happen. And as you snip it off, you watch as it immediately begins Before, to Before, as soon as it comes off, I would like to yes. remove my glove and grab it with my bare hands. Okay. Uh, as you reach forth and you grab it with your bare or with your bare hands, you get a uh, uh, like your your vision starts to change. Uh, you seem to like little bits of wiggling at the corner of your vision, and it begins to intensify, almost like you're going through light speed in the Millennium Falcon. Uh, and then all of the white just sort of flashes into lettering and the whole screen is black and says, are you sure you want to do this? You cannot go back to a previous save. Come back with wings, come back with wings. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Anybody want to take a break and let them think about it? Give them, give them five minutes, hey, go to the bathroom, things like that. Give me some time to think about like this. That. I just worry, because obviously things worked out okay. 
for Xanthar, but then the drow lady jumped in and was never seen again, so. True. She did go in the water, though. She was able to make it back, right? I mean, she didn't go in the goo. It's pretty much like it's pretty much the worst thing you can do. Man. Oh, I thought she jumped into the goo at the end. Did she jump into the? Oh, water she at the no, end? she she oh. fell in the goo. Yeah. At the end, and yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And it was like Terminator with like the dent, dent, dent. Mm -hmm. So that's what happens when you touch the goo. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Look, just cut off one of your fingers and add it to that piece of goo. See what happens there. DM. Uh, and we're back! Have we reached a decision? We have reached a decision. Now, were all the things I was doesn't seeing... doesn't sound like a decision. No, no, no. <laughs> but were all the things I'm see I was seeing just a lead-up flavory for the text box? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I was just, you know... All right. Then... This is my course of action. I will, I try to will it into just my hand, into right. forming a changeling hand. If it does not, oh, let me get this. if it does not form into it, I cut my own hand off. Okay, so. We're you talking a matter of hand. six seconds. You put it on your hand, and then you cut your own hand off. If it yeah. does not change into, if okay. it does not, if it does not do what I'm attempting to will it to do, I will immediately cut right. it off. Okay. You uh, you take the little goop out of the little flask as you snip it off, and you take the stuff, and you just sort of like very quickly, right as it begins to die, the very edges of the stuff start to turn gray. Uh, you can already see it flaking and beginning to, to move into these slightly, slight little strange particles like uh, like ash falling from the volcano. And you scoop it up and quickly uh, you throw it onto your hand and immediately you begin to like sort of grip, uh, moving your hand, uh, sort of like feeling it, willing it. You push all of your mind into this focused desire to force the hand to become the changeling version of what it once was. You immediately feel your body being exposed to something alien and unknown. You can feel the constitution saving throw beginning to rush through your veins as it begins to morph into your body and you just ah, slice. And with one singular stroke, you cut the hand off. Blood gushes outwards as the hand like flops around with its own life onto the ground and begins sort of like scuttling, dragging, clawing towards the grate and then flops into the goop and is gone. With your blood surging out of your body, uh, you immediately like begin wrapping bandages around it, your medical training kicking in as you try and uh, staunch the bleeding, uh, keep yourself alive while all the rest of your team sleeps. Did we wake up? Because I feel like a loud bang of like the cut potentially could have woken some of us up or no? Sure, I'll give everyone, you can all make a, a con save for how I heavy save. a sleeper you are. Okay. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Groga. I listen, listen, man. I I love it. You your luck in D D is so bad. It's very streaky. I can be yeah, very so I, lucky or very unlucky. Yeah, you're Man, I, I don't know. You're not the most unlucky player I've seen, but you do get the shitter a lot of times. I think. So that's that's my casino experience as well. Uh, I used to go to the casino a lot, um, but uh -huh. I stopped 
after I'd lost like 14 times in a row playing craps, I just I Damn. don't go to the casino anymore. But so but I can be very lucky and then very very unlucky. It's <laughs> well, it's that pendulum swings in your favor sometimes. Am I right? Yeah yeah you know I, At least you I, get I can good. be very lucky too. Um, I will say that only Solana, was that Solana with the 14? Mm -hmm. uh, Solana, you're the only one who awakens. Uh, as your, uh, your back is to the barrel, you immediately jolt awake uh, as you you hear the sound of the chop. And the, oh, the oh, sort my... of sound of leaking liquid. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, okay. I'm going to just like literally physically just like crawl over quietly i don't want to wake everyone else too pox um <laughs> i know you like can change can you grow hands as well or is this gonna be a longer term i've never tried okay um can i help you with anything Yes. I would like to take out the severed hand of the changeling that we <laughs> killed a couple sessions yeah. ago. Yeah. <laughs> Hold this. Hold this steady. God. Please tell me you <laughs> cut off the right hand and it's like a, you're putting a left on the left and it's not like a right-handed hand going on your left hand. Like It is the one I pictured. Although I never did specify either one, but it's true. Okay. No, it's it's fine. It's fair enough. I mean, I imagine if you had this plan, you know, half cocked, then you wouldn't have made the wrong choice, right? There's no reason for me to force you to somehow have the wrong hand unless yeah. I was going to be an asshole, and yeah. I'm not an asshole in this circumstance. <laughs> Hold it steady. I'm gonna press a digitation it too, and just kind of clean it up a bit too. Like, I want to make sure the site that I imagine he's going to use is as clean as possible. Sure, certainly, certainly. And I'm going to stitch it onto my hand, or onto my vein, and try stump. to integrate it into my stump. Changeling right, to go changeling. Ahead me, <laughs> go ahead and give me, give me a medicine check. How's Is it dirty 20? Because I'm helping. Dirty 20, you, you begin, uh, Solana holding it for you, you begin to sew your own hand, or this new hand, back onto your stump, uh, and you sort of like match it up as best you possibly can, all the way until there's, it's a very thin line of separation. You pull the, the sinews tightly uh, until it just sort of flops around on the edge of your hand, or the end of your, your arm. Very nice. Also, I don't want to distract you during this but um quite incredible why exactly did you cut off your hand the science was inaccurate i did not look i think it's important go for it i did not get the result i desired from this fleshy mass from this fleshy mass over here. <laughs> you know that one. one. <laughs> oh. Um. I thought I that I might... Hmm? I thought that I might be able to, uh... Here. Will it to change. I felt something in it the first time I studied it. And when was the first time you studied this? Twenty minutes ago. Oh, so I just, I just, I just, the way you said that, I just was like, is, this, is this like secretly something you've been studying for years, and this is your major yeah. scientific discoveries, finding more of it? I don't know. Yeah, no, the the way he uh, said it, I it came across that it way. It did, right? it did, and he's just like. 10 minutes, about give or take 10. <laughs> the moment he looked at his watch, I kind of knew. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, 
I'm sorry the experiment didn't work out. Um, and though I, I do think it is important for people to have hobbies and passions, um, I would warn you that, that, you know, there is a limit of what's healthy. And I do feel like <laughs> cutting off your own hand might be a little bit past that line. Um, so again, fully supportive, you know, you do you, whatever makes you happy. I'm not here to tell you what to do with your life and your, um, interests, but, um, just, just a, you know, food for thought. It was no longer my hand anyway. I'm gonna attempt to cure wounds the bit here in an attempt to pull it together. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Roll me cure wounds and then uh, make you roll me percentile. That roll? No. Ah, there we go. <clears throat> Eight healing. Oh, hold on. That's a magic number. That is a magic number. Please hold. No, no, no. That's oh, a. That's 100. a. Either a very good number or a very bad number. Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> what did you roll? A three. Three on a. Out of a hundred. On a one hundred. <clears throat> okay, so. You uh, cast the healing magic into the hand, uh, into into the lines of separation, and you see the sinew that is holding your like the, the the thread that's holding the two pieces of flesh together begins to sort of get absorbed as the flesh knits back together uh, both sides. Like the vessels begin to connect, uh, you can sort of feel some life or some resurgence pop into the hand, um, and then you feel that. The two hands that you have are very different in nature. They don't feel right, almost as though one is a little bit smaller, a little bit more th thinner than the other. Um, and it seems like you go to, to feel and move it again, and it does definitely move again, but it almost seems to like do this weird sort of a thing that you are not asking the hand to do. Do you usually do that? I've never seen you do that before. Are you just testing or? It stops. Evil. No. Hmm. I also award you plus one inspiration for creativity. <laughs> Beautiful. Can this I try perplexing. ritual casting identify? on this hand. Yeah, absolutely, go for it. Okay. Pox, is it right if I see if this, I just, I wanna see if like any, the magic in here is like working good. Is that, are you okay with that? Very well. Okay, get comfortable. This is gonna take me like 10 minutes. Um. <clears throat> no. Spend 10 minutes doing this. Pox, or you assume you want to remain there for the entire casting? Uh, 10 minutes later, as you cast the Identify spell, you determine that there is indeed some magic laced within the very fabric of Pox's body, um, as he is in fact a changeling creature. You sense that there is some, some darkness within Pox as well. This almost, this strange sensation as though there's, there's something that's not quite right. Uh, it almost would be like a stinging sensation to the nostrils or maybe um, some some sort of like, um, oh, I don't know. Uh, it gives you a bad taste in the weave. Uh, and beyond that, you sense that there are in fact two different kinds of weaves flowing through his flesh. Um, and so he's got the one that sort of like seems like himself, the whole entirety of his body. And then the second one in the hand that seems somehow slightly different. Um, almost as though the very minute differences in, well, I shouldn't say minute, the great differences in sense that you get from different people. You know, some people just have a certain odor to them, right? It's almost like this hand and the rest of his body have a different magical odor. Uh, and the one in the hand actually seems a little bit nicer. Uh, <laughs> that odor is a little bit less offensive magically than the rest of Pox's body, which seems slightly sour. 
rude but fair. <laughs> Do I get the sense of the sourness as anything similar to the sense I have with my own hands? Or a different kind of sour? Um, it does seem, uh... In the vein, in the same vein, um, in that you do sense that <laughs> you do sense that there's some necro some necrotic stuff going on, but you also hear like it's very quiet, or well, actually, there's rushing waterfalls all around you, but you get the the sense as though there's some form of of necromancy going on here in the whole in Pox's whole body. Um, it doesn't seem like your normal necromancy, though. It seems different, and seems to give you this, this like, diesel-y tinge to it. Hmm. Okay, well, good news is, I think it's all connected. Um, other good news is, it, 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 it's a pretty clean hand. Like, it's, it seems relatively positive. Bad news is, you're less... So, um, positive, I mean, um, you, like, granted, you do like your inflict wounds, maybe it's just a byproduct of that, but, are you okay? The hand does not seem to be moving, uh, of your own volition. <laughs> I shall It does be. not seem to do as you wish it to do. I wish to study this. This is different. It, it's kind of it's kind of hard to control. It like flops around a little bit, um, almost as though like, you know, bone to bone just isn't connecting. You said this seemed different from the rest of me. Yes. Interesting. It 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 was almost like it. It, honestly, granted, I saw where it came from, but it almost seems like it really did come from someone else. Someone who doesn't have as much darkness flowing through them. <laughs> Thank you for your assistance. Very much appreciated. Yeah, I'm a light and sleeper. Um, yeah? Is it time for your shift? I'm already awake. You do know you can trust me. I mean, I know we've only been, like, working together, like, I don't know, four days now? Less than a week? I know it's early. I get it. I get it. But I'm here to help if I can help with anything. But go get your sleep. You have a new hand to get familiar with. I want to try one quick thing, though. Um, hand. Um, make a fist if you can hear me. Uh, the hand does not seemingly, uh, make a fist, okay. but it does sort of flop. Huh. Alright. Do with that what you will. I hope it's not like the restless leg thing that keeps you up. That's always the worst. Pox, you feel uh, as though you have phantom limb syndrome. Like you can feel, still feel your hand there, even though you're unable to really feel your hand there. It's very painful. Um, and there's this slight sort of a grinding sensation, almost rhythmically, um, like where that hand is and where it's kind of moving. It's almost like a scratching. <laughs> Itchy. Very well. I will uh, attempt to sleep on this. I'm going to go over to the pillar and uh, sleep next to this lever and keep guard as I Sure, sleep. you do so. You. <laughs> Sleep next to that lever. Uh, Solana, are you taking watch? Is there anything you want to do during watch? Just keep a close eye on Barrel. Make sure he's not 
doing sneaky leaky things, and I'll probably just summon Paylor. Have him kind of sit ah! with me. Finally. <laughs> uh, finally. Do I have a mini for this saved in unique creatures? I probably don't. Uh, I'm an OP. Aha! I do. <gasps> Taylor sits on the edge of the barrel, uh, looking all cute. Uh, its wings some, somehow strangely uh, like little little dappled rays of sunshine and fur. Got a slightly cat-like face to it, uh, despite it being a bird. And as you are resting for the night, please roll me a percentile. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, okay, okay. Everyone can just... do this. Um, you may choose. A, uh, you may choose a victim or a champion who rolls for you. <laughs> or, alternatively, uh, well, no, yeah, you, you can do it that way. Just choose a champion, one amongst you. I don't care who it is. Fox, you did such a good job last time. <sighs> well, I could. Let's see. Percentile, let's go. Hmm, almost a 91, but it's an 11. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, as you are sleeping there, Solana, um, you hear something several, a couple hours into your watch. Um, you hear the sound of a great... As the gigantic gate across the bridge opens. Damn it. Hey guys, look alive. You say it to all your sleeping comrades? Yeah. New hands and all. Without, oh, oh god. Uh, dwarf, sir? Would you like to attempt to awaken your, your your team? Do you want to go over and fiddle them awake, or do you want to just remain the hands laughing, Josh, as he sleeps? <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, how far into the night are we? Um, it's halfway through the rest, for sure. Okay. I'll keep watching it, but I'm going to let everyone continue to sleep for now. Okay. Do you want to pretend like you're asleep? How do you, how do you want to, or like, yeah, just want to watch? Um, I said I summoned Paylor before. Yes. So Correct. I'm going to pretend to be asleep, but kind of talk to Paylor kinetic, like telekinetically being like, look through that gate. Um, tell me and describe to me like anything that walked through. Sure. Uh, you, do you want to just take over his senses? Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, I forgot that's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you just, you just be his, yeah. Uh, yeah. as you take over Paylor's senses and wow, this is the best pretending to be a sleep impression you could possibly give, given that you genuinely can't use your senses right now. So like you can't move, you know what I mean? It's great. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Uh, Authentic. Uh, as you are, uh, doing so and looking through Paylor's senses, you watch as a a person begins to walk out of the gate. Uh, you see what appears to be a, a person wearing like heavy mail. Um, they seem to have this long sword, a sort of wicked, sharp and angular in their hands. Um, and the further they walk, you see that their clothing is somewhat shredded um, as though it's ancient and they've, they've been holding on to it for a very long time. And it looks as though it's noble or it's nobility's armor um, with some slight crooked endings to it. Um, you immediately notice as the person is walking out that they appear to be sort of cold like the grave. And uh, immediately through paler senses, you recognize uh, a similar, a resemblance to uh, Lord Verdot, uh, who had sent you on your mission. Um, and as this person walks out of the darkness beyond uh, into this chamber, they seem to look around, they stand resolute 
at the, uh, across the bridge, just mano a mano with Thumbclaw Big Axe, who is waiting there, staring at the bridge as you had commanded him to watch. <clears throat> and in that moment, the one person like turns around, lifts a hand forward, and then you see a second person of almost an identical description stride forward from the gate. Uh, they go uh, up to the very end of the bridge uh, and then one of them moves out from behind their back, produces this rod with this like, this red crystal at the top, clicks a button on it and you watch as Thumbclaw Big Axe's body goes rigid straight up at a attention. There's sort of a, a, a whispering sound as the creature speaks. Uh, and uh, in Sylvan says, come. Okay. And then Thumbclaw so Big Axe. this, I would like to have ask Paylor, I know I can't like command him necessarily in this, but as best as I can communicate to him, I want him to screech as loudly as he can. <laughs> like, I know <laughs> owls are normally quiet, but I want him to yes. be as loud as possible to wake everyone up. Sure, go ahead and give me a constitution check. Okay. For, for Paylor, Paylor? For, okay. for Paylor, as okay, he attempts okay, okay. to screech as loud as he possibly can. Let me look up the constitution of an owl, unless you have a recommended number. I mean, it's uh, it's not particularly great <laughs> for no, owls. I'm... It, yeah, yeah, you're looking yeah. at it right now. Minus yeah. one, okay, yeah. minus one, so we'll just yeah. roll this. And now we'll take a minus one with it. Okay, 13. All right, team. Uh, by all means, everyone, you may roll your con saves to try and awaken if you like. Um, as... Paylor like screeches as loud as it possibly can. One of the people at the end of the bridge just sort of makes a um, a singular ray of sickness in their hand and shoots it at Paylor, just reactionarily, just. Uh, and they have a um, 19 to breach Paylor's AC. Um, I found his little sheet and his AC is definitely not 19. So yes, that it hits. is not. Uh, yeah. Paylor takes uh, 26 necrotic damage. As he fizzles out and dies, his heart stops from the ray of sickness hitting his body. He plummets down uh, onto the edge of the barrel. <clears throat> And the, the, the creatures, like as Thumbclaw is making his way over the, uh, across the bridge, they take a step back off of the bridge and back into the shadows as they cast that. But everyone who rolled higher, uh, who wished to wake up, who rolled higher than the oh. screech, or sorry, lower than the screech, get to uh, awaken if you so, should so desire. Wait, lower than the screech? No, I guess in this instance, well, what, what do we have? We have a, a 13, a 22, uh, an 11. Uh, oh, no, there's, there's poxes, 12. <laughs> um, I, I will say that Groka definitely wakes up with a 22. Well done, sir. Uh, above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, and for Xanthar and Pox, I will say you were like groggily potentially, uh, like, you know, you can uh, you can determine for yourself if you're a character how quick and alert you are when you wake up. Um, it's within the bound of reasons that you would, you know, like when your first alarm goes off in the morning, you've set three of them, and you're like you're awake enough to like hit the alarm again, but maybe not awake enough to like jump into combat, that sort of a thing. Uh, so you're like a half half cocked measure, but Groga, you're up. You want to do anything? I mean... You hear the sound of the owl cry hoot. The owl hoots oh, and wakes dies. me up. I mean, 
The owl oh. hoots, it wakes you up. And I'll then it, you hear the sound of an owl fall. I'll look around immediately. Yeah. Please, by all means, go for it. Do I do as do you I would? See, do I see anything from where I'm at? You see, uh, Zan. No, oh my God. <sighs> Given your positioning, no, uh, you don't. You see Xanthar asleep. You have to move. Uh, you see the barrel sitting there alone. Um, Pox is asleep. You might see like Pox's hand moving even while he's asleep. It's probably but weird. I heard I heard the owl and I heard the owl hoot from yes. the direction of the bridge. Correct. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, I'll, I'll peek around and like kick Xanthar. Yeah. Be like, hey, there we go. As I look down. You look over to see Paylor's body uh, beginning to fade away uh, as it's dead. Solana sleeping against the barrel. Um, Xanthar, you kick awake and he answers or doesn't to him. It looks like he's pretty pretty ready for sleep though, I will say. Yeah. I roll a 20 for initiative. <laughs> Uh, you do see from this perspective as well and that Thumb Club Big Axe is going across the bridge into the exposed open gate. Oh, the gates are open, though. You can see the gate is open and that Thumb Claw is going across the bridge right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll yell, the gates are open, the gates are open, and then... Shit, I've got that barrel with Solana right there, huh? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I'll be, sh I'll be shaking Xanthar awake. <clears throat> Very well. You begin to shake Xanthar away. You already kicked him. I'm, I presume he's awake. He hasn't said anything, but he can. He so desires. Did we get to rest or no? Uh, you are halfway through the rest. You can do a short rest, but you cannot do a full rest unless you do only light activity. Okay. Guys, I think we might need to let Thump Claw go. Just saying, like, <clears throat> out of canon. Like, just talking to the group at the table. It looks like they're backing back in. Good. I want Because we would die right now oh. against two pseudo-potentially full vampires. But... I think we might be losing Thumbclaw. So I wanted to wake everyone up. In case people had different feelings <laughs> about this. Do, do I see them down there at the end? Uh, they are particularly far away and attempting to glide into the shadows of the gate. Uh, make a, percep or a perception check. Twenty total. Absolutely. You see the glinting of their noble armor uh, in the darkness and like pale white skin, maybe even like the the glow of their reddish eyes. Uh, and you can see like the big swords they hold as well. Does it look like plate mail? Oh, I'll, I'll yell you out. You know, who... Xanthar, it just might. I'll yell out, who, who goes there? Kill the vampires. Uh, <laughs> you yell out, who goes there? Uh, and the uh, all the way across the room, across the bridge, the vampires, uh, as Thumbclaw Big Axe is walking closer to them towards the edge of the gate, uh, they like look over the edge of the shoulder and they regard you almost as like, you kind of, it's, you're hard to see, you're kind of out of view, like there's the barrel that's there. From their perspective, it's a little bit fuzzy. Uh, and they like, you can see their eyes straining so slightly. And they make this whispering sound with the crashing of the waterfalls. It's really difficult to hear, maybe even you can't hear. If you can read lips, you might be able to understand it. As they say, 